who have been away for a while are coming back. Some, uh, every single week I see somebody different, and that's exciting. That's exciting to, in the church, welcoming our online audience. Thank you to all you. We, we love you guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I know that you could be doing something else this morning, but you're joining us here, and we greatly appreciate you. We love you, and I pray that God would minister to you even as you gather uh, in your homes or wherever you're watching from today. Uh, we are in uh, the book of Psalms, or in the collection of Psalms today, in, in Psalm 92. If your Bible's with you, I want to invite you to join me there. You see on the screen the title of my message is Planted. Psalm 92 is where we're going to be. And I want to make you a promise uh, this morning that uh, for some of you, if you take this to heart and you apply this message, you live this out, today's going to be one of those days in the, in the new church year to come, in the days to come, when you look back, you're going to say, that was the moment that God began doing something in me. I, I believe that today because as a follower of Jesus, God's highest calling for you uh, is not to come to church. It's to be shaped into the image of Jesus Christ. It isn't to come to a destination. It's not to just watch church online. It's, it is to be the church, to be planted in the church, and, and to be the people of God uh, called out and sent out to change the world for him. Look with me at Psalm 92. We're going to pick this up at verse 12 uh, this morning. If you don't have a copy of the scriptures, uh, we'll put the words up on the screen for you. You can follow along with us. Psalm 92, beginning with verse 12, it says this. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. Let's talk about this. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They'll grow like a cedar of Lebanon. What does this word flourish mean? It's not a word that, that we typically use, is it? I guess unless you're weird, right? How you doing? I'm flourishing. We don't normally say that kind of thing, right? So what does it mean? Well, in the re original Hebrew, th this word means to bloom, to break forth, to grow. It means to spread. It, it comes with a connotation of abundance, thriving, prospering. And so from a spiritual perspective, it means spiritual growth. It means an abundance. It means a blossoming. That you literally, when you're righteous, when you're planted, you're thriving, you're, you're prospering. Okay? The psalmist here compares the righteous to two different types of trees. He First, the, the cedar and then the palm. The cedar tree is known for its durability, for its strength. It's known for being pleasant to look at. It's known for being a... a a tree that smells good. For example, when Solomon built this temple, you can find, you can read about this in 1 Kings chapter 6. When he built the temple, uh, the beams, the pillars, the posts, this was meant to last for centuries. He used cedar because of its durability. It lasts, it's strong, it's attractive, it smells good, it flourishes. We're being compared to flourishing like a cedar tree. And next he compares us to a palm tree. I, I really like palm trees mainly because to me they symbolize vacation. They symbolize warm weather and beaches and oceans and all that. But for them, the people of this, this day and age, uh, the palm tree, specifically the palm branch, was symbolic of triumph and victory. They would have things uh, very similar to the Olympic Games called the Corinthian Games and the Isthmian Games where they would compete in, in Olympic style competitions. And when you would win, they would say, congratulations, here's a branch. Right? They'd give you a palm branch. You wouldn't get a gold medal. Not quite as exciting, but um, it symbolized victory. Symbolized triumph. We're familiar, many of us, with the passage of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. We, we preach this a lot on, on Palm Sunday, right? Where he, it's known as the triumphal entry. And, and people waved palm branches and threw them down before the king as he rode in on this donkey. It's symbolic of victory and triumph. And so he says, we're flourishing, we're triumphant, we're victorious. Those who are, are planted in the house of the Lord, they're flourishing, they're prospering, they're strong and stable. I wonder today how many of us would be able to say, I'm flourishing. Like, I'm, I'm growing as a believer. I, I'm blessed, I'm strong and stable, I'm pleasing to be around. 
There's life. There's strength. There's victory. See, unfortunately, I think in the lives of far too many Christians, if we're honest with ourselves, we wouldn't be able to say that we're flourishing. Instead of saying, I'm, I'm spiritually flourishing, you might say this morning, honestly, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm spiritually dry right now. Instead of saying, I'm, I'm thriving emotionally, some would say, emotionally, I'm withering at this point in my life. I'm not connected relationally, I'm relationally barren. I'm not prospering financially with room to be a blessing to others. Many would say, financially, I'm hurting. I'm restrained. Instead of saying I'm fulfilled spiritually, I'm making a difference, I'm, I'm, I'm full of joy, many people would probably say I'm, I'm still searching, I'm reaching, I'm longing for that, for that something, that feeling, that relationship, that job, whatever it is that I, that I don't have that would fulfill what's missing on the inside. I go to church, but I'm not flourishing. Scripture says those who are planted are those who will flourish. I want to talk about being planted this morning. And if you're a note taker, uh, here's the first thing I want you to recognize. You want to write this down. And that is that your life is a seed. Your life is a seed. And that means it has tremendous potential. The seed has tremendous potential to grow, to thrive, to multiply, to produce fruit, to be a blessing to others. Your life is like a seed. Jesus told a, a, a story, a powerful parable in Matthew chapter 13, where he talks about this very thing. And as we look at this, you're going to see a couple of uh, principles emerge from this story about the seed. The first one probably goes without saying, but again, it speaks to the potential of the seed. And that is that the, the seed can only grow if it's planted. Pretty straightforward, right? It's about potential, because a seed that isn't planted will, will lie dormant, unproductive, unfruitful, dissatisfied. Who flourishes? Those who are planted in the house of God, the Bible says. Look what Jesus says here in Matthew 13. Being at verse 3, he, he says this. He says, a farmer went out to plant his seed. Why? Because it can only grow if it's planted, Right? And he was scattering the seed. Some fell along the path. And since that seed didn't take root, it wasn't planted, the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. When the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Do you see the potential here? He, he's saying that some, some people have potential but they never go anywhere so, some never get planted and they remain un, unproductive unfruitful dissatisfied some some start to grow but then fade away some start to thrive spiritually but the worries and the concerns and the bills and the struggles of life and how they re choose to respond to all that mess choke out their spiritual growth so we also see here that it matters where you're planted, right? It matters if a seed is planted, and it matters where it's planted. He goes on to say, still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what was sown. This one seed becomes a massive blessing because it was planted in the good soil. But again, that seed can only grow if it's planted, right? Right? And this is really important because when it comes to being planted, church, there's a real difference both in the mindset and in the physical reality of this for us. For example, some of you, whether, whether you're watching uh, from home or online today or you came out uh, to the building this morning, may have had a conversation today even or sometime this week where you asked one another, are, are we going to church on Sunday? Well, I don't know, we've got a game and... That's my only day off. It rained all weekend. I, I haven't mowed the lawn yet. There's grocery shopping to do. Fill in the blank. 
and, and, and what you see there is that church is a destination, right? And it's an optional destination, too. Now, listen, obviously stuff comes up on Sundays. I get it, right? And, and certainly with his last year plus with the pandemic, it's changed the need for online viewing and, and all that kind of stuff, okay? I get it. It's not cut and dry, all right? But we need to ask ourselves this question this morning, and I, want to, I hope to challenge you with this question today. Is church just a destination for me? Is the church just a destination for me? Is it somewhere that I may or may not go? Or is the church who I am? I am the church. And so I'm planted there in the house of God, in the courts of the Lord. It's not somewhere where I may or may not just decide to go. It's who I am. And that reality draws me into community. See, there's a shift in the mindset there. I don't decide to go to church because it's what I do. I go to church because my identity as a believer, I'm called to be the church, Jesus said, draws me into this Christ-centered community to be planted there. Friends, it matters if you're planted. And it matters where you're planted because your life is a seed. And, and listen, I understand that this, this conversation and things I might say may step on toes this morning. It is not my intention to do that, okay? But it needs said. Because gathering in the house of the Lord, in community with other believers, investing in the community, allowing the community to invest into us, doing life together, worshiping the Lord, calling out in prayer together, growing together for the sake of impacting the world for the kingdom of God is not meant to be optional. Okay? Hebrews 10.25 says this, let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works, not neglecting to gather together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other. We've heard many of us that passage many times. I want to point something out to you. Listen to the context, what he says here. Caring for one another, watch out for one another, uh, spurring and provoking each other on to love and good works, encouraging one another. He says, don't stop meeting together, because if you don't, stop, if you don't meet together, those things aren't going to happen. Because those are part of the reason why we're here. Okay? Acts 2.42. The early church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. They gathered together and were devoted to these things. This is what the life of the disciple looks like and consists of. The devotion to these things. In talking about us, the church, Paul writes this in Ephesians chapter 4. He says, from him, he's talking about Jesus, from him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. God created us, the church, to be interdependent and interconnected. No member is supposed to be rogue. We're not supposed to choose to live independently from the rest. We're meant to be together, collectively, planted in the house of the Lord in this good soil. We even see this in the original language. The very word for church, ecclesia, very literally means the called out ones or, or called from out of. Okay? In other words, we, we gather here to be planted, to be unified, to, to glorify God, to honor God, to corporately hear the word of God, to call out to the Lord in prayer, to use our gifts, to serve one another, right? Growing and being built up in love as each one does its work. And as we are strengthened, as we grow, it's not what happens in the church. It's that we are the church and we are called out into the world to change the world. Okay? And that means, listen, that means that when we are planted for that reason to be sent out, we're no longer spiritual consumers. Okay? The church does not, listen, the church does not exist for us. When we're followers of Christ, we realize that we, we are the church, and we, the church, exist for each other and for the world. There's a massive difference between going to a building and, and being plugged in and planted into a calling, into a movement, into a mission. It matters if you're planted and where you're planted. Let me give you two scenarios. 
this isn't exactly across the board thing, so bear with me. But, but as a pastor, it's pretty close in my experience. Person A goes to church, maybe even every single week, okay? But they don't ever really get planted. They don't ever really get plugged in. They, they, they go to church, but there's no real joining in the community. They aren't really being discipled apart from what goes on in here for an hour. They aren't really invested. There's no real contribution. There's no real giving. There's no real serving. They aren't really planted. And what you'll see almost every time, if they stick around the church, is when life happens. You know what I'm talking about when life happens, right? When the marriage is suffering, when the kids decide to wander off and, and, and aren't pursuing the things of God anymore, when finances are struggling and, and, there's, and you lose a job or you hate your job or your family gets sick or somebody even dies. Things are hard, right? Life happens. They're not really planted, and so the first thing is you'll hear is they're disconnected. They feel disconnected from people. They're not flourishing. They aren't stable. They aren't blossoming. There's no abundance taking place. And because they never really take on the mission of the church for themselves, not only do they not flourish, but they cannot be used by God in the way that he desires to use them in their life because they're not planted. Person B, on the other hand, goes to church, embraces community, really gets planted in good soil. They're invested in the community. The community's investing into them. They're, they develop relationships. Maybe they're part of a life group. Someone's praying for them. They're praying for someone else. Instead of just going to church, they use their gifts in the church, and they're giving, and they're serving, and, and suddenly, the church is not a destination. It's an identity that they embrace. They're part of the family of God. They're they're, they're planted, and their roots begin to grow deeper, and they're growing. And listen, when life's not perfect, and the bottom falls out, and friends, it does for every single one of us at some point. The bottom falls out. The storms come. This tree can withstand the storms. They stay connected to the community. They stay connected to God, and they flourish, and he is truly able to use them in the way he desires, as a light shining into this dark world. There's a big difference between going to a building and being planted, being plugged in in the house of God. Your life is a seed. It needs to be planted where it's going to flourish. Okay, so, so what happens when you're planted? I want to give you two quick things, okay? And the first of those is that when you're planted, I, I just alluded to this, in the, in the pre end of the previous point, is when you're planted, your roots will grow. They'll grow deep. Prophet Jeremiah in chapter 17, you don't need to turn there, we'll put the words up for you. Jeremiah 17, beginning with verse 7, this is what the prophet writes. He said, but blessed is the one, listen to this, who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends its roots out by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. I wonder today how many of you can testify to this. Right? You've got some heat in your life. Physical heat. Spiritual heat. Relational heat. Financial heat. There's problems, right? There's trials going on in your world. I wonder how many could be able to say today that things aren't great right now. They're, they're not exactly like I want them to be, but I'm not bothered by the heat. I'm not bothered by the drought because my roots are deep. And I'm planted and I'm connected to a source that is greater than any problem on the surface. I'm trusting in the Lord and my confidence is in Him. So here's what I can, can promise you this week and in the days to come is that you will face opposition. You'll face a trial. You'll run into a struggle. You'll, you'll have a setback. You'll encounter some crazy people. If you, if you don't, come see me. I'll give you one of mine. Okay, they're everywhere, right? You will face some sort of opposition. And if your roots are exposed, you're more vulnerable. 
See, I'm going to tell you right now, the enemy does not mind if you just show up to church. Because he wants you to be isolated. And when you're not planted, when your roots aren't growing deep, you're vulnerable. Friends, we need to be planted. We need to be rooted in the word of God. We need to be planted in the community of God. We, we need to be people who, who get into discipleship classes and, and, and get into Bible studies and get into prayer groups and get into life groups and pray for each other, care for one another, provoking each other on to love and good deeds. Encouraging one another to trust in the Lord and to place our confidence in Him. We need one another. Because when you're planted, those roots grow deep. I can tell you over this last year, I can't speak to, the, to what that's meant to me to have the support of our church family. Right? It's been difficult. It's, been, it's difficult to be uh, the church in this day and age. But I can, I can attest for me and, and my wife that that we feel loved and encouraged and, and welcomed and cherished by our church family, and our roots are covered by your roots, and I appreciate that. When you're planted, your roots grow deep. The second thing that happens when you're planted is that your life will produce fruit. This is huge. Your roots grow deep, and you'll produce fruit again. Look at Jeremiah 17, verse 8. The tree sends out the roots by the stream, it does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought, drought and never fails to bear fruit. When you're planted, your life will bear or produce fruit. The psalmist in, in Psalm 92 in our passage said that those who are planted in the courts of our God will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, again, listen to the proclamation. The Lord is upright. Right? My trust and my confidence are in the Lord. He is my rock. There's no wickedness in him. When you're planted in the courts of God, you produce fruit. So let's talk about this fruit for a minute. What is, what is fruit? The Apostle Paul talks about this in the fifth chapter of Galatians. And he calls it the fruit of the Spirit. Last week, if you are with us, we talked about being filled uh, with the Holy Spirit. And Paul tells us here in Galatians that when you... When you're filled with the, with the Holy Spirit, you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into your life, you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside. The result of that, the evidence of that, will be spiritual fruit. Okay? That it's a spiritual fruit that comes from God. In other words, when, when you're planted, you're plugged in, you're connected to the vine, the spiritual vine, planted in the courts of God, we flourish. Okay? The Holy Spirit produces spiritual fruit in our lives. What does that look like? Paul Gives us a, a list of that in, in Galatians 5, beginning with verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Here's what that means. When you're, when you're planted and, 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 you're, and you're thriving and you're prospering and you're flourishing, all of these good things grow in your life. Even when you're in a very difficult time, even when you're in a difficult season of life, love still comes out. And joy still comes out. You still produce peace in the middle of the trial. That's the Holy Spirit living within you. It's no longer I who live, it's Christ living in me. And his goodness is evident in me. And people can see evidence of his faithfulness in my life. And his self-control guides my walk, right? Right? There's, there's fruit in my life because I have the Spirit living within me. Let me tell you what that looks like in the context of community. Because when you're, when you're planted in community, people begin to be blessed by this fruit. And you begin to recognize that this fruit isn't just for you. But that your love blesses other people. And that your joy is contagious. And your peace is attractive. And your faithfulness builds relationships. And God uses you to make a difference in somebody else's life. In the kingdom of God. And you realize, wow, God chose me and, and he's using me. This isn't just a place where I, I, I go to church. These are my people, right? And it may not be perfect, but, but, I'm, but I'm needed here. God needs me to do what, he, what he's called and created me to do. And I'm known and, and I'm loved and I'm planted. 
in the house of God. And you recognize that I'm not just saved from my sins, but I am saved for the glory of God to make a difference in this world. Right here, right now. Friends, there's a difference between going to church and being planted in the house of the Lord. Only a seed that's planted will grow and flourish. And, and friends, it's, it matters where you're planted. Are you planted in good soil? Next to the living waters of Jesus. Where your roots can, can grow deep into the word of God and into a strong Christian community. It is vital for producing fruit in your life. So how do we do this? How do we perhaps go from where you might be to, to where God wants you to be? Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. You can begin just by saying yes. Just try it. If you're, if you're not somebody who is invested already, just try it. Just begin to pray for somebody else. And, and begin to, to give to others and, and begin to, 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 to serve. Just say yes. Take that first step. Be, be a voice of encouragement, a, a smiling face, an extended hand. Be somebody on a Sunday morning who, who, who looks around and says, I don't know that person. Maybe they're, they've been here for a while and just haven't met them. Or maybe they're, they're new. And, and maybe you get to take part in somebody else's story where they would say, man, I was nervous. I was scared to come to church and, and you cared enough to make me feel welcome here. Be willing. Be willing to use your gifts to sing, to decorate, to teach, to clean. Come and serve somewhere. Come, come and help change the life of one of those little people in children's ministries. Be open and willing to, to get into a life group and let somebody invest in your life and invest into them. And if you don't know where to begin with any of this stuff, where to serve, how to connect, please come and see me because we want to help you find your place. We want you to connect. I want you to know that I'm making a difference. I don't just come to church. I'm making a difference in the life of somebody else. We want you to feel welcome. We want you to flourish here see the lie the lie of the enemy is that you can find a way through all the spiritual opposition is you can find a way th to fight off the temptation of the devil just by turning on the online broadcast or just by coming to church on sunday morning the lie is that you can flourish by doing it on your own without being planted in a strong Christian community. The lie is that you don't have to be all in. Friends, we need to be real with ourselves. Is church just a destination for me? Or is this who I am? I am the church. And so I'm planted here uh, in the house of God, in the courts of the Lord. I I I'm flourishing and then I am sent out to proclaim this message that Jesus saves. Friends, it's time to get planted in the life of Christ. It's time to get planted in your church. If PCN is your church, get planted here. It's time to really get planted, to get your roots down, get into a Bible teaching class, get, in, get into some kind of group, serve, give, be a blessing to others. And if it turns out this isn't the place for you, that's okay. I, I, will, I would love to help you find the church that is right for you where, where you can put down roots and, and you can flourish there because God has something amazing for your life. I believe that today. He wants you to flourish where, where you can look at your life and say, it, it may not be perfect, but you know what? My roots are planted deep and my faith is strong and, and I'm invested in other people and they're invested into me and I'm needed and I'm loved I'm a part of something. I don't go to a building. I am the church. I am God's ambassador in this world. And so I gather here, planted in the house of the Lord, and then I go out, strengthened 
to change the world for the kingdom of God. Now's the time, church. Because God wants you to flourish like the strong cedar, like the victorious, triumphant palm. And only those who are planted in the house of the Lord will truly flourish in all that God has for them. Now's the time to get planted. Amen? Would you stand with me? Heavenly Father, we love you today. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the truth of your word that proclaims the goodness of God, the sovereignty of God, the holiness of God, this, 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 this life-changing relationship that we enter into where we not only know you and are changed by you, but shaped and called and strengthened and, and, and we flourish to be sent out. That's who we are. We're the church. Sent out to change this world, to let them know there is real hope and his name is Jesus, that you don't have to be a slave to sin. You don't have to be a slave to fear. That there's something better out there. There is real peace and joy and community available in this great God that we serve. So Father, fill us with every good thing that your spirit has for us today. Shape us that our life might produce this fruit, that we are, are, are planted and our roots grow deep and that we would say, yes, Lord, I'm available. I'm available to you. I'm available to my, to my community. I'm available to do the things of God and that our roots would grow deep down into your living waters and we'd be changed to look like Jesus. And, and, and the people around us would see that love. The people here in this building would see that love and the people out in that community would see this love and would be attracted to you. That's our prayer today, Father. Change us and send us out. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray these things. And all of God's people said, amen. 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 Thank you all for being here. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe. Celebrate. Remember those who have sacrificed for you. God bless you all. I hope to see you again real soon.